Hi guys, long time viewers of the channel know that the most popular video I have ever done has been the little ZV-E10 versus the Sony A6400. Now it was just a spec comparison where I was showing in black and white the differences between these two guys. And that video actually helped catapult this channel into monetization and in the tens of dollars. So this video, oh my God, it should make me rich because I actually have the two cameras and I will be showing side by side footage, so uh, let's talk about it. Now, if for some reason you haven't seen that spec comparison I did between these two cameras, then I would recommend you watch that after you watch this one. In fact, I would just recommend you put my channel on a loop. It's not gonna kill you, but that video really breaks down the major differences between these two cameras. I won't go as in depth in this one because I'm gonna show the side-by-side -side footage, but I will talk about the similarities and the differences in broad strokes. So let's go with those broad strokes. First, we're gonna say it's the same sensor. So it's the same sensor and the same processor, 24, megapixel sensor so uh, obviously the photos and videos are going to look similar it is a 4k image down sampled from 6k on both cameras obviously up to 30p they also can do 120 frames per second in uh, hd now there are no overheating issues on the cameras when used in moderate environments and uh, there's no record limit as well so which makes them excellent for video in terms of photos, you can get 11 frames per second with mechanical shutter, and that is pretty good. That's better than the a7 IV that's filming me right now. That can do 10 frames per second. These guys, 11. It has virtually an identical menu. If you pick up one camera and you use it for a while, you will definitely be able to use the other one very easily. So yeah, the footage and photos are gonna be similar, but how similar? I will show you. I will show you the photos. I will show you some outdoor tests. I will show you some vlogging tests, some studio tests, and at the end, I will also do a low light test because I know people love to see a low light test and I love to fool the algorithm. So uh, I guess you could probably just skip to the end to see that, but don't do that. Don't, that would hurt my feelings. Stay, please listen to all of the things I say. So I'll go out there to Handsome Alley and I will show you the HLG3 picture profile I like to use, the Cine2 profile, which I also like to use. And then I will put it in just auto mode so you can see the standard settings to see how the camera would choose to expose and color the image if you just pressed record. The differences between the two, let's go. So obviously with color grading, you can make them virtually identical. I actually kind of liked the A6400's auto mode a little bit better than the ZV-10, and that surprised me, but I was in that specific situation where I was backlit in an alley. So that will vary depending on your situation, but I do find the ZV-E10 exposes a tiny bit brighter than uh, the A6400 to its detriment. Now to me, it doesn't matter because I'm always trying to color grade my footage. I'm always trying to use the proper profiles and I like to use a Paul Leeming LUT for correction. And that's why, in my opinion, the HLG3 picture profile you saw and also the Cine2 profile look a lot better than that auto mode. And now I'll show you that studio test I promised. And now let's compare a few photos side by side before we start talking about some of the differences. Now let's talk about some major advantages the A6400 has over the ZV-E10. And uh, the first thing, first and foremost right here is the viewfinder, the electronic viewfinder, 2.36 million dot viewfinder. If you're taking photos or if you're doing video on a sunny day, you will definitely want to use the EVF. The screens are also not great on these cameras. Of course, they both have the same screen, something like 921,000 dots. It doesn't look great. So it is definitely nicer to use 
the EVF. You wanna take photos, you wanna take video, to look through that thing is a whole lot better. What's also better is the build quality. This thing is weather sealed and uh, this thing, the ZV-E10, is not. This has a more rugged feel. It feels good in the hand or anywhere else you might wanna put the camera. I like the ZV-E10 personally uh, as well, but it is just, it's definitely more plastic in its feel and it's lighter, it's airier. This guy, much more solid construction and uh, I would trust him in harsher conditions. It also has a little built-in flash that you can use. I wouldn't wanna use that much. I would like off-camera flash is better, but it's nice to have it in a pinch. And also uh, this thing here has a uh, minimum auto ISO shutter speed. So if you're in auto ISO in like say aperture priority, you can set your minimum shutter speed to be a certain amount so that you won't get picture shake. And since uh, neither camera has actual IBIS, like in-body image stabilization, this guy has electronic, we'll get into that in a minute, but this, uh, it's better to have that minimum shutter speed in auto ISO if you can have it. Much, much better for photos when you have that. This guy doesn't, I wish it did. I actually wrote Sony and asked them to add that in a firmware update, but uh, they seem to have ignored me on that. So it's definitely a win for the A6400 in the photo category. Now the little ZV-E10 has a lot of benefits over the A6400 as you might figure seeing how it came out much later. Even though it has a lot of the same parts, then uh, they optimize the software and it does some better things like eye autofocus in video. So uh, this guy doesn't do eye autofocus in video and the ZV-E10, he does eye autofocus for humans and animals in video and photo. Now the A6400 does have eye autofocus in photo, but it does not have it in video. Also has a USB-C port. This one only has a micro USB. So uh, that is better for charging and connections, but it's also better for streaming. You can actually use the ZV-E10 as a webcam, just plug and play. You don't need any proprietary software. You just plug it right in, you're ready to go. And you can also do that with streaming. Now with streaming, you can only go up to 720p, but a lot of times that is all the services will offer you anyway, 720p. So you can do that straight from the camera. If you wanna go to 1080 or 4K, you need a capture card. But the uh, A6400, you can't do that at all. I mean, you can get the capture card and all, but you can't do the 720 USB stream from a USB-C port that it doesn't have. ZV-E10, fully articulating screen, whereas the uh, A6400, it just has that uh, flip-up screen, which is actually quite usable, really, when uh, it's not great because it has the little eye cup that you know, inhibits it a little bit, but it's quite usable if you don't have anything connected. But I'm often having wireless mic packs or I'll use external monitors. And you know, yes, you can get an extension thing uh, that come out there. I think Small Rig makes one or something like that. And you can put the wireless mic pack, but you know, my external monitors, the whole thing is a bit of a mess when I am trying to use the flip up screen with other things. If it's just you and the camera and you're recording your audio you know, externally, no big deal, but uh, definitely the flip screen is better than uh, this flip up screen, at least for video. The ZV-E10 has a bunch of tally lights to let you know you're recording, a red ring around the LCD screen to also let you know you're recording, a big red record button up on top and quick modes to get from photo to video. It's a bit beginner friendly too, you know, it has the background defocus. So it's a bit of a gimmick where you can just manipulate your shutter speed, aperture and ISO and defocus your own background on the A6400, but that is nice for beginners. Whereas uh, the product showcase mode, I don't think is a gimmick. It's a little button you can just press. And uh, so if you're holding up a product quickly, you know, it will just focus on that product. This is the A7 IV, it doesn't have it. So it doesn't snap quite as quickly. Plus, you know, if I don't cover my eyes, then, you know, see how it doesn't move. Whereas the product showcase mode, if I had that on the little ZV-E10 and I did this, it would latch to the camera. So I, I really do use product showcase mode because I showcase the products occasionally and it's nice to switch it. This guy, you can do the same thing with the autofocus, but you'll have to dig into the menus, change your autofocus settings. And then when you want to change them back to your face detect autofocus, because it doesn't have eye detect, but it does have great face detect autofocus, then uh, you have to go back into the menus again. The vertical video on the ZV-E10, the TikTok, the booty popping, man, oh man, you want to pop the booty, this is the way to go. Because if you just record it like this, 
this, you're gonna have to flip it in software with the A6400. The ZV-E10, it flips it for you. Get your booty all lined up. Headphone port on the ZV-E10, that is a big one. If you're Jordan Drake from DP Review, he spits on cameras that don't have headphone ports. He needs to monitor his audio to make sure Chris's hair sounds just right. It is also a lighter camera, which is better for gimbals. I like to use the little ZV-E10 with light lenses on the little Zhiyun Crane M2S. And even though this guy is something like 400 grams and this guy's 340, that's 60 grams, you know, it makes a difference. And the ZV-E10 also wins when it comes to external monitoring. At 24p and 25p, you keep your face and eye auto detect. Uh, you lose it when you go to 30p, but at least in 24 and 25, you have it. Whereas the A6400, you lose your face and, uh, well, it just has face detect autofocus. You lose that when you shoot uh, anything on external monitors. So, I mean, you still have autofocus, but it's a center-based autofocus. So, uh, if you uh, want to keep your face detect autofocus, then you need to output only to HMI, to uh, HDMI, to a recorder like a Ninja 5, then you will be able to keep your face detect autofocus. Face, F-A-C-E. Sometimes people think you're saying phase, but you keep your face detect autofocus. Now, uh, same thing with the ZV-E10. If you want to shoot in 30p, the one time you'll lose your eye and face detect autofocus, then uh, you can just do output HDMI to your recorder or your streaming device and uh, you will uh, keep the eye detect autofocus. And now I'll talk about a big one, then I'll show you tests of this big one and that is the uh, stabilization. The ZV-E10 actually has two modes of stabilization. The A6400 has none. So uh, it, this has been called a vlogging camera. I like to consider it a content creator camera because it does a whole lot more than vlogging in my opinion. But it does have e-stabilization and now that crops in at 40%, but it's still stabilization and it actually works pretty well. But more importantly than that to me is the ability to record uh, gyroscopic data and then run that through the free program, Catalyst Browse, and you get gimbal-like footage even though you're not using a gimbal. So I would not do the walking and talking with the A6400 as it has no stabilization of any kind. Now I wouldn't do it, but I did do it for this test. So uh, let's check that out. So this is the A6400, just have it on my little Ulanzi selfie stick and I'm walking very carefully with my gut sucked in because I am trying to keep the camera as steady as possible. But as you can see, it is still quite shaky so uh, you know no stabilization in the camera or the lens so this is literally the best that I can do I am doing my best with the a6400 I would recommend that if you want to go out vlogging just go from place to place set your camera up on a little tripod have nice backgrounds you know like this this fence that's falling down over here very lovely backgrounds and then uh, you know do it that way don't walk and talk with this camera because you're probably not going to love the result. But check this out. This here is Catalyst Browse. Still holding the camera by the lens, but uh, it records the gyroscopic data here on the ZV-E10. Run it through the free program, Catalyst Browse, and you get gimbal-like footage. It's very GoPro-like because it records the gyro data. I hope that all cameras have this going forward. It's an extra step and it takes some time, but it is very much worth it. In my opinion, I do it all the time. It takes about three minutes on my computer, which is a 2019 iMac. It takes about three minutes on my computer to render one minute of footage. So I just factor that in to my entire process because, you know, the whole thing is a process. People who say they don't have time for Catalyst Browse, it's like, well, you set up your camera, you went out. If you're gonna use a gimbal, you set up your gimbal. There's a lot of time that you need to spend to make a video, so yeah, it's extra time, but it's all time. Right? Now, if you don't want to go through Catalyst Browse, you can use the active stabilization on the ZV-E10. The active stabilization actually works pretty well. It's just that uh, it crops in mightily. This is about a 40% crop, as you can see from uh, the field of view that we have here. And also with uh, active stabilization, sometimes you want to up your shutter speed a little bit uh, because with the active stabilization, they, it doesn't love motion blur. And that goes for almost every camera out there that uses e-stabilization. So I like to shoot it at about 1 100th of a shutter speed. Right now I'm just doing 1 over 50, but I'm not moving too much, so I doubt you're going to see any of those weird blurry frames, but if you do, that is the reason. Anyway, this is a great option to have, which the A6400 does not have. Oh, yeah.
As you can see, the clear winner is the ZV-E10 uh, with the A6400. I think that you should find other solutions than walking around talking to your camera. Plus, it makes you look weird. A lot of people gave me funny looks today in the park. I don't care. I didn't feel awkward at all. I'm super confident. Now, before I talk about price and which one you might want to buy, let's do that low light test that I was talking about earlier. So to me, quite similar. I did think the ZV-E10 did a better job at white balancing in those extreme low light conditions because that was extreme low light. If you see any of my tests where I'm comparing the ZV-E10 to other APS-C cameras and even some full frame cameras, boy, this guy does pretty good in low light and then so does the A6400. So in terms of low light for APS-C cameras, you cannot complain about either of these two. So now we have to talk about price. The ZV-E10 is uh, $700 right now, body only, and the uh, A6400 is $900. So you have a $200 premium to pay for this guy, even though the video features are better on this camera. So if you're looking at a hybrid camera, of course, you know, for photos and videos, I think A6400 is probably your better bet. If you're someone who takes a lot of photos, that EVF is really great. But here's what I'm gonna say. I probably wouldn't buy the A6400 at full price right now for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's a lot of used A6400s on the market. And number two is that the product cycle. You know, uh, ZV-E10 came out last year, so I doubt they're gonna be updating this guy anytime soon. But with the release of the FX30, we know that the APS-C for uh, Sony, that that sensor is new. So that sensor is probably gonna trickle down into updates, I'm assuming, for their more hybrid type cameras because the FX30 is really, you know, a video camera, almost strictly. It can take photos, but not very well. Now, uh, the A6600 is definitely due for an update. So is the A6400. So that's another reason I wouldn't buy it at full retail price right now because even though Sony hasn't told me anything, this is just you know, a guess, an educated guess, because I am a very educated human being. It's just the FX30's out, eh, probably, they'll probably update this soon. I will say that I love both of these cameras. You can't go wrong. If you had either one, you can make it work. You can make the ZV-E10 work for photos. You can make the A6400 work for video, and you will get amazing photos and videos if you just spend a little time getting to know your camera and working around the limitations. Limitations like, say, you know, rolling shutter, which is pretty bad on both of these things. It's not a problem for me and the way I shoot, but I know a lot of people don't like the rolling shutter on these two guys. Sure, I would like it if it didn't have bad rolling shutter, but it does, so I work around it. So write in the comments below what you thought, which one you would choose, or if you have a question, I'll be sure to answer it. I'm an encyclopedia of knowledge after all, or I can ask somebody who is actually smart. So I appreciate you watching this and we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.